everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of Comfort Food, the podcast all about arts and media that people love and the people that love them. Today I'm joined by a very special guest. She's a streamer, an activist, and a mother. It's Zombie Kills. Welcome, Zombie. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah, Zombie Kills. You can call me Zombie. Everybody okay. calls me Zombie. It's easy. It's like more familiar. It's like a first name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with it. So, uh, Zombie, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today? So we're going to talk about my lord and savior, Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beasts. <laughs> it's a great show. Um, I guess it's supposedly targeted at children, but I've found it easy to like devour as an adult. It's out of DreamWorks uh, Studios. It's based off of a webcomic by Rad Seacrest. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, and it's just, to me, everything that Tank Girl is, but in kid form. Uh, and I kind of <laughs> love it. So tell me a little bit about how you found out about Kipo because I, I think I heard, I think my girlfriend told me at some point that she was watching like the first couple episodes, but for, I think school reasons, she probably ended up st falling off of it. But so an, up until when you hit me up about doing this episode, I hadn't really heard anything about it, which is shocking to me. It's, it's, it's shocking to me. So, <laughs> so like... I saw it, so my kids and I, I'm always looking for stuff to watch with my kids. Like, stuff that's, like, kid-friendly, but not, like, to the point where, like, your brain feels like it's oozing out of your ears while you're watching as an adult. Stuff mm -hmm. that's clever and that's layered. And then, you know, I also like stuff that still has that cartoon style, you know, that yeah. I, I enjoy. Not that weird, you know, Pixar kind of animation but like an uh, actual cartoon you know mm -hmm. i grew up watching cartoons as most of us old folks uh did i did so, too yeah so <laughs> so watching cartoons is so you know fun for me and i mm -hmm. saw kipo on netflix when it popped up and i noticed that there were black characters in the art graphic and i was like holy cat be like it's it's black cartoon people we have to try mm -hmm. this you know and then i read right. it up and i'm like oh my gosh it's like dystopian future type stuff you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like it's post-apocalyptic <laughs> type of situation which is a hundred percent my brand and like my lifestyle <laughs> like anything post-apocalyptic uh dystopian future type books movies television i consume rapidly like i mm -hmm. love it actually and, um, i think I think when you hit me up to talk about it, you specifically described it as post-apocalyptic hip-hop cartoon goodness. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's post-apocalyptic hip-hop cartoon goodness. And that's literally all the things I love. I love, I love hip-hop music, and I love post-apocalyptic stuff. Mm -hmm. So it just it drew me in so fast. Like, I don't know. You started watching it. So how did you feel? Like, you did you just get sucked in? Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I, I really did. And when you... I was I really didn't know what I was expecting going in because you know you see the the art style and the the main characters obviously all younger. So when you said post apocalyptic hip hop cartoon goodness, I was expecting something maybe a little bit more um I was I was thinking like okay, something like kind of gritty, almost like the 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 kind of thing you'd hear where it's people finding old like maybe like kind of gritty Wu-Tang kind of music. And um, I mean, I mean, we do have a Wu Tang we, member yeah, we, we uh, in that show. We do have a Wu Tang member and in the show. That was I. I popped off when I heard uh, when I heard the Jizz's voice because I'm I'm a huge Wu Tang fan. But um, yeah, but yeah, he, um, oh my god, I completely got derailed. Oh yeah, um, so when I when I when I first started watching it, I was like, wow, this show this show isn't gritty. It's happy. It's goofy. It's cartoony, but it respects its audience so well. And, and it's it a little gritty. There's a little grit to mm -hmm. it. Like, uh, like Scarlemagne is grit. Uh, controlling mm -hmm. humans and exploiting them and wanting to suppress others is pretty gritty. It's a pretty gritty yeah. theme, like, for me. And the Newton Wolves, you know, uh, they're pretty gritty. That entire yeah. backstory with Wolf. Spoilers for the show, yeah. by the way. Spoilers. Um, it's very deep and it's very like traumatic yeah. and it goes through trauma like one of and the it... things i enjoy about the show is it shows wolf literally being you know she's being traumatized she was befriended and exploited and and traumatized and she's trying to work through her trauma 
to be able to love uh, fully mm -hmm. and not with fear with Kipo. And that's a big theme, I feel yeah. like, for a show to to touch for children. I, I absolutely agree. I, I I mean, growing up, I mean, one of the other things I was going to say about the show and immediately getting sucked in was, you know, I remember as a kid um, waking up on the Saturday mornings and just waking up in the mornings in general to watch something like SpongeBob or Ben 10, Alien Force or Pokemon or whatever. And um, a lot of that, a lot of that kind of show is either not necessarily plot driven, so it's harder to address those kinds of stories and kind of go on those journeys with characters or it's like kind of supposed to be like pre macho masculine type thing because it's all marketed at boys and it's supposed to be like cool and edgy and i think that that's kind of to those shows detriment in my opinion yeah and i i that was i was one of the things that i really did want to talk about was wolf's journey in particular wolf's journey to me um showing a wounded black girl who has uh been hurt by familial you know things was very mm -hmm. poignant to me so i have a lot of family trauma uh and mm -hmm. trust issues that i've worked through over the years um and i'm a lot of a lot of other black girls do too and it's not something we talk about is like mental health issues or being mm -hmm. scared of things in the black community we're always supposed to be like super strong warriors like like she is you know mm -hmm. all the time and we're not supposed to have these weak moments and so with her seeing those moments where she's just like so afraid and she just flees the situation or, you know, she, she can't handle it and she, or she just grabs Kipo and holds her so tightly, you know, and, and she's, there's tears, you know, like there, those moments being portrayed in blackness uh, are important mm -hmm. and they need to be shown and they need to be represented. And it was great for me. Um, yeah. And it was great for me to see my kids do that. And it's like, oh, her parents hurt her. And it's like some, some, you know, people's parents hurt them and some foster parents hurt their kids. Like these are things that happen. And mm -hmm. uh, I just felt like it was so beautifully done. It wasn't overdone or too traumatic, but it was mm -hmm. enough to say anybody can hurt you. But just because people hurt you doesn't mean there aren't people that will love you just as much as people hurt you. Because mm -hmm. Kipo loves her a thousand times more than the people that hurt her, you know, right. and I love that. Just like mm -hmm. I love, you know, how we're seeing, you know, homosexuality in, yeah. uh, in the show. Black homosexuality, you know, like mm -hmm. people of color being, uh, you know, LGBTQIA um, and addressing it at a young age in a very, like, tactful way. Because there's a lot of feelings when you're Kipo's age, you know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of feelings. And uh, they touched it. They were direct about it. They didn't dance around it. Mm -hmm. And then in the second season, they actually went straight for it, like even more, yeah. you know? Yeah, and it was, and and I think that was that was another thing that I really liked about the show, just generally the way it kind of handled the younger romance, especially with Benson and Troy, um, watching them interact in a way that didn't feel, because a lot, in a lot of, in a lot of cartoons, you see romance between two characters and it's kind of portrayed in a weird way where there's like a lot of jealousy and like people like trying to make other people uh, mad at the other person to get their attention and that kind of thing and it was so refreshing to see benson and troy just being good to each other even yeah, though they were... weren't like necessarily together together at that yeah, point. yeah it's so cute and like i also like the fact that like music is this unifying theme right through the show yeah. so like music is this like cultural olive branch throughout the entire show and it's a way that people express emotions in the show and like Okay, so Benson is a straight up like hip hop head and then he meets mm -hmm. Troy and Troy is like a straight up hip hop head. Mm -hmm. And it shows that you don't have to be a specific type of gay either, you know, mm -hmm. like a pandered stereotype of gay. Right. They're like two dudes who love hip hop <laughs> and are out, you know, going through adventures and, you know, they're not stereotypical in any form. Like nothing mm -hmm. about them is stereotypical, just like nothing about Kipo is stereotypical and wolf isn't some stereotypical character of a black person mm -hmm. so the depth of the people of color makes me happy the presence of a whole home for kipo her dad being such a dope nerd also <laughs> sterling her dad's voice you know the i was his... so surprised i didn't know i, I didn't him. know that he sang dude i love him 
I just love him. I love him in This Is Us. Uh, it's another bit of comfort food media that I like to consume. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, like, when I heard his voice, I was like, get out of here now. <laughs> this is literally the coolest thing. And he's so – their relationship is so close. And I love – the bond there i'm a i like i love my dad he's my mm-hmm. bff and me and my dad are super nerds we go to cons together <laughs> like we're we're super nerds right mm-hmm. so for me that also touched on like that whole vibe like this show and i'm like you know a black girl who likes you know punk music and likes to play guitar and sing and rap mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff so for me it's like kipo is like a little me then there's wolf who's also like another part of me and then there's benson mm-hmm. who's also another part of me and then there's dave that's the sarcastic ridiculous part of me because dave is so great yeah i was so i was i was like again i, I talked to you th- about this a little bit over dms and stuff but i've been trying to consume as many podcasts and youtube reviews and articles and s- people writing about it and I was surprised to see how mixed people were on Dave, but I mean, I I loved Dave. I think he he and Benson together, their chemistry was so good for kind of um, allowing the subtlety that they played certain things to to shine, while also having comedic relief to keep it from getting too heavy and from weighing certain things down. Dave is in, in, in like he's invaluable <laughs> to that he's show. He's great. Dave also like. He, Dave touches some real stuff. Like, he points out those moments and he's like, y'all better appreciate this moment. Like, you know, mm-hmm. he's like, he's like, y'all better appreciate this. And he also is that voice inside of you that's like, let's be impulsive. Let's do crazy shit. Like, he's that person who, <laughs> when you're listening to Dave, Dave's just, Dave's all of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dave's mm-hmm. all of us sometimes. Dave's everybody's impulse is Dave <laughs> and and I love him for it and I love the balance because Benson is a little you know more on he airs on the side of things and if he didn't have Dave to push him he wouldn't always come through the way that he comes through mm-hmm. like Dave pushes Benson to be the best Benson Benson's gonna be and I don't think that Benson would have survived so long uh, out on the surface without Dave. Absolutely. I I don't think he would have, just like I don't think Kipo would have survived. Well, she probably would have survived because she's got a knack (laughs) for finding her way, you know, letting goodness kind of light the way for her. Mm -hmm. But like, I mean, Wolf survived as like a very small kid Mm -hmm. by herself. And And also, it's tough. Also, sorry to interrupt you there, but um, going off of kind of the, chemistry between dave and benson i think that also you know we touched on this a little bit earlier but that that chemistry between kipo and wolf is also so paramount to letting both of those characters shine yeah um, I, I agree like you see kipo kind of you know like you said using one of the u- universal themes of this show and i guess humanity too uh, in music and trying to use that as a way to break through to Wolf and to kind of help her break through her shell. You know, you don't really see Wolf sing until, or really even appreciate much music until towards the end when she's starting to open up more. And I think that that little moment of seeing her start to sing is so powerful and so, it feels so good to see after, um, you know, seeing her be more attached to Kipo and then be more tolerant of um the mutes that they have with them it's growth it's like consistent growth right like the Mm -hmm. whole time you're seeing her work through her trauma and process it and at times it takes her over her as trauma does Mm -hmm. um at times she's she needs to go and benson's just like you know you know he gets really real with her a couple of times and i won't spoil the whole thing but there's there's a lot of working through trauma that Wolf does. And as cool as you think Wolf is and how strong you think she is, you realize that that is not really that she's strong. It's that she's hardened, you know, mm-hmm. herself. And that her strength is actually in her, like, ability to overcome this trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was forced to be very alone and very hard at a very young age. And yeah. That's tough. And surviving in that environment. I mean, the mutes, as hysterical and great as they are, like, the mutes are amazing 
like are they not the like the music? They are the, the best. best. The the frogs, the the uh, I forgot what the, what the, the rabbits skunks. are called, but we yeah. got skunks, we got we got the um, hummingbirds, we've got the, like the, got the timber everybody. cats. The timber the timber, the timber cats, cats are great. Are so great. Um like I think I mean like obviously I love anything favorite. that Steve Blum is involved in, but like they're so cute. They're so cute. And I'll say <laughs> this, like probably my personal favorite yeah probably the timber cats i'm just gonna mm. have to say i'm gonna have to give to it but i do like the frogs yeah no i love the frogs so much the frogs kind of remind me of the frogs from uh what was that kids movie the uh with... claymation one uh flushed away or something like that no 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 not that one the one that was like it was a dreamworks movie i think and the kid made a mm-hmm. time machine meet the robinsons oh yeah and the frogs were in suits, and they all talked like Frank Sinatra, and they pretended to be mobsters and threw somebody in the trunk of a car at some point. Like, that reminds oh, yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of them, kind of. Mm-hmm. And I like the character arc and the development that they did with the frogs, mm-hmm. like a lot. Like I, I like how they really went into their personalities. For me, it definitely. I don't know. It added a lot more depth, too, because yeah. you really start to see the power that just being a good person can have, but also how stressful being a good person is. Mm-hmm. Being and a then, good person is not without its stressors at all. Right. right? I think you can agree. Like, yeah, what do they say? Absolutely. No good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> mm-hmm. And in Kipo in the Age of Wonder Beasts, you see that no good deed goes unpunished, but you also see that, like, Good no prevails. good deed good does prevail at the mm-hmm. end of the day and that sometimes the rewards are so much more rich than the stuff that you manage to lose uh for being good mm-hmm. and sometimes it feels like you know being good can make you feel beat down and exhausted and tired but like with kipo you kind of see that you should just never grow weary of doing good mm-hmm. and i love that like for yeah, me th- watching it with my kids that's a great message Mm-hmm. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think, you know, going back to Kipo as a main character, she carries that message so well. Um, like you see, you see the scene with, um, with the giant mute, the giant monkey mute where it's kind of going on a rampage and she starts singing to it, just like walks up to it, com- like without any fear in her heart and just keeps singing. And I, th- I think that scene in particular is so powerful and does such a good job of conveying like who she is as a character. Yeah, I love when she had the chance in the second season to escape and leave Jamak behind mm-hmm. in the the bunny den, and she could have left him. Like he was about to kill her. Like he was gonna sacrifice her, and yet again for a second time she saved his life. You know, in that moment. Mm-hmm she thought she was selfless uh and it's like selflessness is her instinct Mm -hmm. you know and everyone else is always kind of trying to suppress that a little bit (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know like they're like you know selflessness will get you you know sacrificed and Mm -hmm. she doesn't care and her friendship is the same way she's just all in with her friendships she's all in with everything she does she does it with her whole heart and as as a black woman in america today Mm -hmm. it's so nice to see that um from us you know in a a cartoon and i know it sounds silly because it's a cartoon but it's not it's i'm so tired of doing good sometimes you know Mm -hmm. like i'm tired i think every black person in america right now is pretty exhausted Mm -hmm. you know uh to be fair right and then You see something like this and it's just got this subtle way of like reaching into your bones and saying you know don't get tired of doing good Mm -hmm. like don't get tired of being a good person don't get tired of of rising above don't get tired of reaching out and trying to make the world a better place um Mm -hmm. and as an activist that's literally my core of my being So Mm -hmm. to see that exemplified in a TV show is really righteous. The TV show is kind of radical. It's like this radical level of kindness and this radical level of selflessness that I I honestly think we need in our world um, right now. We need Mm -hmm. radical love 
to change things. It's going to be very radical. Loving people selflessly is kind of a radical idea, don't you think? Like, Yeah, I think so, especially when, you know, there's so much of um, society, especially American society, where things like di- things that discourage loving your fellow man is discouraged just by societal systemic issues, whether it's racism, sexism, homophobia, all of that. Yeah. And I, even... I, I, I agree. I think it's hard. I... I think uh, radical self-love and radical selflessness in a consumer-based, you know, society is is uh, very brave. Yeah, especially you know, touching on self-love, especially is it's it's so frequently lost. You know, you see um, people talking about how since social media has become more prevalent, people. Um, find themselves less happy with themselves because they always see an idealized version of another person's life somewhere on the internet. Yeah. And, you know, uh, obviously, I'm not going to say that social media is entirely bad because it's what uh, my entire uh, creative output is based on. <laughs> but um, but I think that that's an important thing to take away is that, you know, that self-love that Kipo has and brings out in other people uh, is really resonant to me. Um, I I was going to wait a little later to ask you about your favorite episode, but I'll just jump right in. When I first started watching this show, um, the first thing I tweeted about it was, uh, was, was the first thing that I said to anyone about it, was that uh, episode three broke me. And um, I don't want to get too far into it because I have a feeling a lot of the people who are listening to this already know, but episode three talks a lot about loss and potential of loss. And about a year ago, actually a year and five days ago, um, the person who is like pivotal to my career in, in super inspirational to um, everything that I do on the internet. And honestly, my mindset for a lot of the things I do on the internet was found uh, dead in the, I think in the Hudson river uh, after jumping off the Brooklyn bridge. And I'm so um, sorry, that's terrible. Yeah, terrible. and and that that idea he, he was his his name was Desmond Demofa, aka Etika, um, and he he kind of he he had a lot of mental issues starting in a, at a certain point in 2019, and then he, oh, I think I know this person. This is yeah, the YouTuber. Yeah, the YouTuber. Um, he's famous for like his Smash Bros. reactions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um and. He got. Uh, he had a lot of people on social media kind of bringing him down, dragging him, saying that all all, all that he was doing, all all the things he was doing, was for uh, was like com- was to, for like a bit for attention and all that stuff. And you know, watching him kind of lose his grip because people were just hurting him so much and rejecting his uh, his mental health issues was so was so hurtful and so hard to see. Um, to slide into the replies or the comment section of any YouTube video he, he put out or any stream even and just see a bunch of clown emojis just mocking him and mocking his his anguish was really was really hard and it's it's been a loss that even though I never really knew him personally has really affected me and um, the a lot of talking about loss I think is one of the things that specifically the third episode does super well sorry that was like a huge tangent but it really hit me hard in that respect I agree with you, actually. So, my best friend, eight years ago, on May 25th, uh, committed suicide. Mm-hmm. Um, I witnessed my friend commit suicide. To I'm be so sorry. A little heavier. Um, and it's something that I still struggle with talking about a little mm-hmm. bit. But um, loss never goes away, you know. It just changes, takes sh- different forms, and it does different things. And episode three is definitely um, a very good episode for people who have lost things in their life or are dealing with even the concept of such loss. And it Mm -hmm. kind of is good with dealing with, like, the loss of our life as we know it now. Yeah. And I almost feel like this whole show is kind of good uh, at dealing with with the loss that we're dealing with now of like the world as we know it Mm. the whole show is Kipo going to the surface um after she's been living underground in a burrow you know and she's been raised underground in this burrow she's 
known this life her whole life. She doesn't know any difference that she's underground. You know, she just knows the story she hears about the surface. And for her to go to the surface is like, damn, everything's scary. All this stuff is crazy. But, like, I was always this loving person in the borough. And I'm not trying to let the world change me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel yeah. like that's kind of where we are right now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we've been raised one way our entire existence, you know, currently us existing on the planet right now. Right. Um, we've always been able to kind of just freely go about and do whatever with no real th- acknowledged threat to our person. Because, I mean, you could die in a car crash, but we don't think about it all the time, right? Because anxiety mm-hmm. would be out the fucking roof. Uh, <laughs> but... The thing is, like, now our lives have changed and we've kind of had to adapt to becoming these borough people. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) it's kind of crazy to watch the show and deal with, like, it's not safe to do this. It's not safe. Hey, you can't do that. It's not safe. Mm -hmm. But still trying to be kind at the same time. Mm -hmm. Still trying to think we're all equal at the same time of dealing with this crazy situation of the surface. Uh, is like this allegory for like the pandemic almost it's like you know we're you're out here and we're trying to be the best and all these people are grouped up and they're all in these separate groups and everybody's kind of spacing away from each other and Mm -hmm. you know but at the end of the day like this kind of chaotic good i'll say (laughs) kifo because she's straight up chaotic good right like she really is she's just Mm -hmm. chaotic and (laughs) And, and she's wild in her goodness and she's mm-hmm. unlimited in her her beauty and niceness and unwavering and, uh, too she she is unwavering she cannot mm-hmm. be tamed, but she deals with that too a lot sometimes you burn yourself out and kipo starts to burn out in season two um and she starts to struggle with control and understanding that sometimes you can't just rush into things, right? Mm -hmm. She's starting to learn Mm -hmm. patience and she's starting to learn all these things she had no concept of in the borough because she was safe. Mm -hmm. Um, And watching like her dad be like, chill the hell out, Kipo, you know? (laughs) And like the stuff that she's had to go through learning, you know, uh, herbs in, herbs out, (laughs) you know, like her (laughs) learning, her learning self-care and to Mm -hmm. find things to ground her is like this experience I relate with. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you do too. I think everybody can relate. Like we have to find these ways to like take care of ourselves because Mm -hmm. sometimes you can burn out like a flame doing good. Even doing good can be exhausting. Uh, Right now with what we're seeing in our industry, in the games industry. Oh my God. (laughs) There's a lot going on, right? Yeah. And I'm just burnt out as a woman right? Mm -hmm. I'm burnt out. As a black person, I'm burnt out. (laughs) As a black Mm -hmm. woman, I'm like extra burnt out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so for me watching and seeing this, I'm like, I have to herbs in, herbs out. Like I have to turn off Twitter sometimes. Mm -hmm. I have to go play Animal Crossing. (laughs) Go put on some Kipo because I've been rewatching Kipo so much. I've watched season two like three times already. Oh, wow. And, and uh, like, I have to just pull back and realize I can do good, I can be good, but I also have to be, like, intentional and specific with the good that I'm doing. And good to yourself. And I also have to be good to me, yeah. And mm-hmm. that's also important for me to try to teach my kids because we don't grow up learning about self-care, really. No. We don't grow up learning about taking care of yourself when we're teaching kids things we teach them be nice to others right (laughs) be mindful of others feelings all these things about others but we don't really Mm -hmm. say be kind to yourself care about your feelings listen to your heart because that would be considered what selfish in our society (laughs) quote unquote right right and um i like to keep us teaching them these lessons i i like that you know Finley, the other day, my son, he's neurodiverse. He has sensory processing disorder. Mm. Um, so he can seem a little chaotic uh, if you don't know him. He is like, it's like he's 
got rocket fuel running through his veins. <laughs> He's just moving a million to nothing all the time, and people often mistake it for ADHD. Mm -hmm. And um, the other day he was saying herbs in, herbs out when he was stressed out because my son has what's called emotional regulation disorder. So when mm -hmm. he gets upset, he has a hard time upsetting, like he can't gauge his emotions and he can't really process them well, right? Mm -hmm. And so he started saying herbs in, herbs out, herbs in, herbs out. And I was cracking up because <laughs> he was really trying to regulate his his ups like how upset he was he was trying to calm himself and it was such a cool moment to go like this show just taught him how to like get a grip on himself like he's mm -hmm. that's crazy yeah you know that's crazy and, and i'm just addicted to the show because of stuff <laughs> like that you know like i'm addicted to it because it's this i don't know it's uh, it's got a lot of magic to it i feel like yeah that was that was one of the things I was actually going to ask you about is as an activist and a mother and a black mother and a mother of black children, um, this show, I, I, I mean, obviously, you know, you've mentioned it already, but how has this show kind of impacted where maybe how you've gone about pushing for change or um, encouraging your kids to do certain, to live a certain way or raising your kids? What are some other ways that you've seen that kind of either impact the way you go about that or impact your children directly well great story this is a good kipo story that i have that i can tell you that's really awesome so awesome. my 11 year old daughter just came out as mm -hmm. gay to me <laughs> she just she is 11 her name's phoenix and she came out after watching kipo so like she watched kipo with me and mm -hmm. i could tell she was like feeling a little like some type of way about it the episode where where we found out that benson's gay right mm -hmm. and she goes upstairs and then she came downstairs and she was crying um and i was like phoenix what what is wrong and she was <sighs> you know like really upset and mm -hmm. she's like are you still gonna love me if i tell you something and i'm like kiddo there is literally nothing you could do like literally at all that i wouldn't love you for mm -hmm. you know like there's I mean, unless you tell me you've been murdering puppies and like stashing them in the garage and then like I might freak out a little bit and like, and she started mm. laughing, you know, and she, cause we do that, you know, that's how we kind of, I like to make jokes with my kids and it's a way we like break the ice, you know? And uh, she started laughing and she said, mom, I think, um, you know, I don't like boys. And I was like, nobody likes boys when they're 11 Phoenix, boys are trash. Um, <laughs> And she started laughing a little bit more. And she's like, no, I think, like, I like girls. Like, I like, like, girls. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. She was like, yeah, I think that I'm, like, uh, you said, I think I'm gay. You know, like, I like, like, this friend of mine. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And that was it. <laughs> that was literally <laughs> it. Uh, and she's been out ever since. And. Mm -hmm. It was just like this big moment in our house, but it was funny because like she obviously, I kind of knew a little bit, you know, but like mm -hmm. at that age, you don't really want to say too much. You just kind of support them and wherever they mm -hmm. go. I mean, and I'm new at this. And let them find I'm, it on their own. Yeah. And I've never done this before. I am freaking right. brand new at this parenting <laughs> shit, bro. I just am out here trying to be a good human. Uh, I have no prior parenting experience. She's my firstborn. Uh, mm -hmm. So like, you know, um, but that was like it and it, but it spurred this conversation we were able to have and we were able to talk about it and she's like loving this whole troy and benson arc she's like so into it mm -hmm. and like i love that she's seeing this and she's seeing mm -hmm. that this is okay because we live in mississippi where homosexuality is literally punished you know people you know can be fired from their jobs for being gay because we passed some very hateful laws here mm -hmm. uh if phoenix was to tell other kids at school because of the southern baptist roots here you know they might not let her play with her etc like she has a right. hard road ahead of her she's not mm -hmm. just black she's not just a black kid but she's a, a black gay kid so like mm -hmm. she's gonna have some struggles um mm -hmm. but i want her to be like hippo and i want her to be unwavering uh in her person and i want her to be okay with loving whoever she wants mm -hmm. to love she may you know decide something else who knows i mean you when you're 11 right. you, you know stuff you don't know stuff <laughs> and i don't know what she feels but i know that she felt it strongly enough in her person and that's how she is that it's not gonna change you know mm -hmm. uh you know i feel like this was her moment 
for her to come out. And some people come out when they're 16. Some people come out when they're 55. But my kid right. came out at 11 because she knows that's who she is. And she's always been that kind of kid who just knows who she is. Yeah. And um, I'm glad for that. I'm glad for shows that address that because as open-minded as I am and I always want to be, I don't know all the answers to how to do all this stuff or how to broach these conversations. Having the sex talk was terrible. Uh, it was fucking terrible. I can imagine. <laughs> it's literally terrible. I don't rec- – 10, 10, don't recommend it. It's a horrible <laughs> – it's horrible uh, – mainly because of our puritanical values that have made us feel like it's hard to talk oh about these kind of yeah. things you know what i'm saying so it's like made everybody feel really shameful but like right these types of things there's no parent guide well there probably is but it's like really shitty and probably written by an old white man so like I, i've definitely had to adjust and learn things mm-hmm. so i like shows like this for my children at, at the end of the day because it opens up a pathway for these conversations and it puts positive values and positive representations of these things in their mind mm-hmm. and we need more media like that we need we do we need so much more <laughs> yeah I, you know? I i honestly wish that you know people that i knew and went to high even even high school with that uh had had this show when they were that age because um, you know even to this day i see people you know being hateful towards my friends and towards people towards entire groups of people based on race or based on their sexuality and it's it 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 seems like it's not if if they had this growing up even if they didn't identify with those things they would be less hateful because they'd have better understanding they wouldn't just see this person as a stereotype they wouldn't just be afraid of this person they wouldn't just see this person as someone who's from a different walk of life than from them and I like that. It approaches the conversation and it shows all these different groups of mutants too. And like mm-hmm. how at the end of the day, once a threat, you know, is over all of them, they start to realize, you know, like, oh man, like we're not so different after all. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, and I love that unifying threat. And, you know, the unifying threat right now that we're trying to do is we're trying to dismantle white supremacy. All of mm-hmm. us. Uh black and brown adjacent people white people are trying to dismantle it right now currently um you know and control and slavery and all these terrible things Mm -hmm. and it addresses that in kipo uh Mm -hmm. wildly which is crazy right and it addresses our treatment of animals and our treatment of all kinds of things like it really touches on a lot and i think that this type of media that touches on so many radical things having our children consume this can only make us better Mm -hmm. yeah because it normalizes that thought for them growing up (laughs) yeah instead of normalizing some kind of and obviously i'm not someone who thinks that necessarily that cartoons or video games or anything cause like cartoon violence or violence in general but i think normalizing those conversations through the means of art and media is so important yep i agree with you i couldn't agree with you more and actually, so something that you brought up uh, with um, talking about how we treat animals um, and that I I feel like would, would have fit better in, or earlier in the podcast, but I, why not bring it up now, is um, Scarlamane's entire character is super parallel to something like Wolf or to, to Wolf's backstory yep. um, where, you know, you see him have a loving home and then all of a sudden not have that. Yep and what that does to him and how he unlike wolf is completely impervious to that and he lashes out and he wants to control everyone he wants everyone to worship him it shows you how drama can go Mm -hmm. drama can create a villain or trauma can create a hero um I've allowed my trauma at certain points in my life to make me a villain, Mm -hmm. I believe. I've definitely not always been the kindest or the best. Definitely beat a few people up, done some dumb shit. Uh, (laughs) uh, And I've also done great good in my life. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think the dichotomy of those two things, showing both sides of what trauma can do is important because at the end of the day, it also kind of shows a theme of like, how insidious 
trauma or systemic racism is. Like you might get mm-hmm. one person who gets out of it alive, but the other person might be consumed by it. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's important to see that because in that show, if they wouldn't have had that damage, um, that that real turn of anger and rage, you know, mm-hmm. then you wouldn't feel it. And Wolf and has co- anger and rage too. Mm-hmm. She just is trying to conquer it. We don't know where Wolf's gonna go at the end. Like you know, you don't know because she right. at one point she breaks off from Kipo, and then you're like, maybe she's really done. You know, you don't you don't know. You want mm-hmm. her to be there, but right. we don't know where her anger and her rage are gonna take her. Um, she's not dealt with all of it yet. She hasn't mm-hmm. processed it all yet in the show as it's going through. And the same can kind of be said for Scarlet. He's just kind of filled with hatred. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how that's I feel like it's an accurate representation of trauma and what it can mm-hmm. do to people and the places it can take you in your mind. Absolutely. And, um, you know, you even see him the way the way he I think the way he responds as someone who's been so deeply hurt, the way he responds to Kipo is so interesting because he he uh, you know Ki- again Kipo is just so unwavering in her compassion and love and pursuit of good that um, you know when she's with Scarlamane she doesn't treat him like an enemy she treats him like a friend almost like a brother and seeing how. Um, seeing how he kind of reacts to that and how he rejects it and how he almost breaks through multiple times, but then something snaps him back and the, the ways that that's treated with um, kind of regressing to a state of being traumatized is so raw and relatable and realistic. It's very realistic. Um, in working through my own personal traumas, I definitely have had moments of regression, like, mm-hmm big moments and I definitely you always hurt people you love right right Um, because it's a safe place and like sometimes you hate the people that you love the most Um, I don't know I just found Scarlamagne to be very interesting at first he seems like this wild character but the more we get revealed about Scarlamagne the more you're able to understand where he came from. It's almost kind of like the Joker, you know, movie that was just out (laughs) recently. Like you can kind of see why people snap. You can see Mm -hmm. why people get so hurt and you can see that like, this is just a hurt person and hurt people hurt people. Right. You know? Um, So this is, sorry, this is kind of taking a little bit of a, of a turn, but something that really stuck out to me about this show as well as obviously the characters and the way it, lets those characters develop and how it respects the characters' stories and the things that have happened to the characters. Um, and we, we kind of touched on this earlier, but uh, the music in this show is so damn good. So dope. It is... It, it, when you... when I, I think one of the, my favorite things about it is it kind of... It lets the genre of hip-hop... It kind of destigma, destigmatizes the genre of hip-hop to me. Like, it, it doesn't just lock it into one specific kind it lets it grow. Every single group has like a different kind of take on it. Every mm-hmm. kind of group of mutes that is. And that's something that I loved about that. So I was just curious, what would you say is your favorite like group of mutes theme? And what was your favorite track from the show in general? Definitely, too? definitely the, definitely the Newton Wolves song. Like, mm-hmm. were they yeah. Expl- yeah, like, I mean, okay. So like my style of hip hop is definitely more like that style of hip hop, mm-hmm. you know, like underground hip hop, like people just like, bebopping and rapping and it's like conscious hip-hop but this is like mm-hmm. ultra conscious hip-hop because it's like about space and shit <laughs> uh but it's definitely the vibe that i like the most um for me uh, and i like the vipers like rock style and everything like i mm-hmm. dug that too like that's really cool um but like definitely the newton wolves whole vibe you know brainiacs yeah. like everything else and like kind of savage and ruthless with their intelligence mm-hmm. i i loved um that just and appealed to me that like y- their whole vibe just appealed to me a lot like i love the timber cats for who they are and their friendship and their loyalty but mm-hmm. i fucking love the newton wolves for their intelligence and their savagery like at the same yeah. time like i love that they're not just 
savages, but they're highly intelligent savages. Um, and they're not like weak little brainiacs either. No, no. Like, I, I feel like that's something that cartoons portray so badly is, is like yeah. the kind of big and strong equals dumb, smart equals small and frail. Yeah, and in this show, they flip that on its head so many times. Like, mm-hmm. look at the hummingbirds with the bombs. I mean, like, <laughs> they're, like, <laughs> the tiniest, nicest things, and then they've got, like, the most damaging, insane bombs. And, the sh- like, the show is wild. It definitely takes, like, stereotypes and, and like, flips them on their head a little bit. It's almost like mm-hmm. anything, anywhere you think it's about to go, it doesn't go there. Like, yeah. And everything that you wanted, like, where you wanted it to go, like, mm-hmm. even though you didn't know you wanted it, it takes it there. And then yeah. it enriches that experience. But the Newton Wolves, for me, like, they did it. Like, mm-hmm. they just did it so well. And using Jizza, like, <laughs> so good. Yeah, I, what what better casting is there? Like, I, I that, not, that, was, that was something I was going to bring up was that, like, I feel like the way you're describing that kind of savage genius is such a, is such, it's so analogous to um, the Jizza and Wu Tang in general. Like, yeah, Wu Tang Clan is nothing to fuck with. They're nothing to fuck with. In case you didn't know, in case the <laughs> listeners didn't know, they're definitely nothing to fuck with. We I should think... do. We should do. We should do a, po- an, a podcast about uh, Thirty Six Chambers sometime. I'm a hundred percent in. So just go ahead and sign me up awesome. now. Put me on the calendar. <laughs> like I'm down. I uh, love the celebration of blackness, and I love the mm-hmm. diversity of blackness as a black person getting to see that personified in a uh, TV show, let alone a TV show for kids, um, was fantastic. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to see us celebrated, and I want to see us be diverse, and I want to see us. Uh, have these beautiful things and hip-hop is so deeply part of our culture like Mm -hmm. it's so part of our culture and of fucking course hip-hop's thriving in the fucking apocalypse of course it is that shit is apocalypse music you know like it's just so good (laughs) right like listening to like the oz the originator tracks like come on Mm -hmm. like they're so good like they're so good and yeah. uh, seeing Benson talk about his 200-year-old sneakers, <laughs> like, come on. That was, like, one of the best <laughs> moments because, like, I'm like that with my sneakers. Like, I've got a pair of sneakers from the 80s that are collector mm. sneakers. I'm like, please don't touch my sneakers. They're, like, 40 <laughs> years old. You know, like, <laughs> right. and I think it's so dope. I just, I, this is everything in my brain I could have ever said, like, I wanted to be made into a book or to into a movie, you know, mm. like a full-length movie or something, like, came out here. And it's incredible. It's just, mm-hmm. the more you watch it, the more you realize, like, look at the rats. Look at Ratland. How much did you love Ratland? Ratland was great. And also, I like the the slight dig at Disney. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love the, well, you know, we got to love the dig at Disney. Like, yeah. Uh, it, and I love the fact that at the end there on season two where Ratland was the was the car, <laughs> was their van, <laughs> was their van. Mm-hmm. They, it's just, I don't know, just everything about this show uh to me is so man i had a bad fucking day i'm gonna watch some kipo and your day mm-hmm. changes like yeah tell me your it's day didn't a... change <laughs> like we've had a rough couple of weeks people in this yeah. industry right we've had a Absolutely. rough couple of weeks when you were watching that this past week doing all the crazy shit that was going on kipo was like fucking amazing right it was like oh yeah you I, watch it I... and your whole person changes exactly like i i woke up when i when i first started watching the day i started watching kipo i woke up um because it was like right after the um the star wars squadrons reveal so i woke up and i was like i need star wars now (laughs) and um and i i was like wait 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 i i want to do this episode with zombie i should watch kipo first and i started watching it and it brought that same level of magic of comfort of kind of celebration of good eventually prevailing and um yeah it 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 just made i was also feeling really burnt out on like playing games because that's basically all i've been doing um since quarantine started like a lot of other people i know and um and so having that kind of that moment to press pause on the uh the violence and mayhem of something like god of war which i just finished for the first time and switching to um, something like Kipo, where it's all about love and celebrating love and celebrating being who you are, was so um, was so profoundly refreshing. Yep, I agree. It's powerful. Mm-hmm. 
in a way it's like it packs a powerful punch right like you're we're going through all this shit you're going through it too i mean you're a cis white male right so like you're going through it too in a way you're witnessing you having to stand up and dismantle a system that Mm -hmm. benefits you that's kind of tough i mean it is a little tough not yeah. as tough as, you know, being a victim uh, no. of systemic racism, <laughs> right. but it's definitely kind of like, what the fuck? Am I, I part it, of this? Do I, I, how do I fix this? You know, yeah. like, I know that that is on most good people, most good white people's uh, mind. It's um, also, it's also hard seeing other people like me lash out as a result of people saying that this needs to be better. Yeah, it is. There's a lot uh, and it's polarizing and terrible. And then... You go see something like Kipo and you go mm. and you're like, okay, this isn't so, you know, all these things are so polar. But I, I don't know. It subtly changes your mindset, that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's hard for me to explain that. I I, th- I think I gather what you're saying because even, even like slight things you'll see in that world, I, at least for me, um, obviously on top of just the love and magic of the show and the characters – but um, something that I wanted to bring up earlier was the the, the, the Frogs theme, which is like this kind of French, um, super fast-paced hip-hop song that's like, I don't remember the, the name of the song, but it's, that, that style is very familiar to me because um, in high school I had a friend who moved here from Guinea and, um, you know, he was in my French class and I was, I, he and I were the only two guys in that class, so naturally we kind of gravitate to each other because that's that's how high school goes and um hearing that theme reminded me that i should reach out to him because i haven't spoken to him in a while um and even just things like that where it it, where it like you it gives you reasons and it gives you places to find positivity in your life yeah i you can get consumed right now looking at all the horrible shit Mm -hmm. you will lose yourself you will lose your sanity if you have anxiety like me i have severe anxiety and ptsd everything i everywhere i look right now is fucking triggering Mm -hmm. um and i have found that by at the end of the night getting off all my social media and putting on an episode of kipo um i feel my mindset changed i feel recharged and i feel like it's literally self-care to watch that show (laughs) and it's weird to think about that like as a tv show because sometimes i do that with like queer eye or something like that but then i still get really weepy and blah blah Mm -hmm. blah but kipo (laughs) is just like really good and it kind of recharges my don't get tired of doing good meter you know and i like Mm -hmm. can get back up and be an activist i mean you follow me you know what i talk about all the time right um i'm not wavering in who i am Mm. uh It is hard for me at times as a mother, as a woman, and as a black person, not a person of color, but I'm black. Um, Mm -hmm. It is hard for me. Right now, I am a sexual assault survivor. Mm -hmm. I am deeply triggered by what I'm seeing in the games industry. And I would be lying if I said that I myself hadn't been a victim to people sending me extremely inappropriate messages or even inappropriate pictures as a streamer. Our lives have got to change. We have to do better. And when you see shows like Kipo, I feel like subtly we're moving the needle towards just being better. Because if you're consuming this and the media and everything eventually has to do with what you consume, because we talk about the power of white supremacy in media, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So if we're consuming media, that's portraying black people the way that we should be portrayed that's portraying love and and kindness and acceptance and that is portraying doing what is right even when it is hard and you're scared um we're moving the needle right absolutely we're moving it towards making the world a better place maybe it's slowly Mm. to whoever but i feel it very instantaneously with this show yeah. And I, you know, I don't know if you did, but I mean, for I know, me, it was I, like, boom, I know exactly you know? what you yeah. mean, um, you know, from from the kind of tense, a little bit of build up to the reveal that Benson was gay to an entirely black or non-white cast of core characters. Um, that's so rare. You never see that. Ever. Yeah. And. um like like you said that it feels like that's pushing the needle in the right direction yeah 
Um, all right, so I think uh, it's about that time in the part. It's oh my god, wow! I am fumbling over my words because I forgot how to intro this part. <laughs> um, it's about that part in the show where we take input from members of our audience, where I ask uh, across various social media platforms about what people think of this show and memories and attachment that they have to it. And <laughs> so far, so far we only have one. And it's from my friend John, uh, at Mainman John Adaya on Twitter. He says, Jamak equals best boy. He doesn't just go from villain to friend. He's got to be convinced over the course of both seasons. Also, Panther Arms, yes, please. 100% <laughs> agree with this person. They're obviously mm -hmm. a person of taste. Uh, <laughs> I do like Jamak's plotline. Like I told you Jamak earlier, I just, I like him because he's real. He's mm -hmm. so used to just looking out for himself and doing, and he like identified heavily with this group, and then that kind of fell apart. And mm -hmm. then he's like trying to find out who he is as a person, but he's like, "Man, I'm trying to deal with my own shit, Kipa. What the hell?" <laughs> like, yeah, and he's just and he's still it, holding on to the identity of the of the mod frogs too. Like he has the way to. he talks about like his fashion and his tie, and he's like, you can see that he's struggling with that. So then when Kipo brings something else that's like world shattering to him, it it it, it shakes him. Yeah, and I think that's kind of how we all deal with change in reality. Mm -hmm. We're like, yeah. bruh, but this. We're all holding on right now in the death throes of the end of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. We are holding on to it because so much of it is so ingrained in how we operate every day. We don't know how to live without it. Even us as black people, we don't know how mm -hmm. to deal with the, the chains being lifted at times. Like it, it doesn't, we don't even know how to trust it, right? We don't know how yeah. to move in it. It's this whole thing, and it's crazy, and it's scary, but I love the fact that Jamak is, like, still up for it, but he's, like, having to work through being up for it. And, like, what does mm -hmm. that say about him? And is he, like, a good person? Mute? Is he a good mute? Or is he, you know, is he this lone person? Is he alone in this world? Like, there's so many complicated emotions Jamak goes through. And mm -hmm. I and I like Jamak. I like that he really wasn't a villain. He was just trying to look out for himself. You can't really call mm -hmm. him a villain because he wasn't really like some... He wasn't right. really a villain. Like, he was just mm -hmm. like, I'm looking out for me and the mod frauds. We're doing our thing. Mm -hmm. We need to get... You know, we're looking out for success of ourselves. I'm not bad. I'm just looking out for myself. You know, right. Scarlamane is a villain. Yeah. <laughs> but they're just looking out for themselves as mutes because mm -hmm. mutes look out for each other. And they don't think there's anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so I love that part. I, I love that arc. And I love what that says because mm -hmm. um, I feel like Jamak, this is me putting like this parallel here, is like my white friends who are starting to learn about white supremacy and like how much mm -hmm. it benefits them and everything else. And they're kind of struggling with their privilege right. and they're kind of like falling apart, but they like ultimately want to do the right thing, but they don't understand mm -hmm. or know how to live without like the stuff that they've had so far. Mm -hmm. And so like they want to be right, but like, they're also like, but damn, <laughs> it sucks over here. And we're like, <laughs> right. yeah, we told you bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> And um, so like Jamak for me is like my allegory for like a white person struggling with, their white privilege and like mm -hmm. becoming very quickly aware of it and uh realizing like earth shatteringly like what does this mean for me and who am i anymore right it's like a really good like metaphor there yeah, no, like, i never i never thought about that it, that way but that's yeah that's super apt I, I, I you see where i'm going though it's like yeah no very definitely apt <laughs> for it like maybe they didn't mean it that way but that's how i feel <laughs> that's mm -hmm. how i feel about the show like i'm watching it and i'm seeing this and i'm like man that's how they, my white friends must feel mm -hmm. so like i like that i i like it and i can identify it with it very easily um but he's definitely not a villain like i just don't i don't think all white people are villains you know either mm -hmm. i just think like as a whole y'all are trash but like <laughs> individually like you guys there's like a team, right? White supremacy is a team, and you're just wearing that jersey. It doesn't mean like mm -hmm. you, you're just wearing the jersey. The person in the jersey isn't necessarily bad, but the jersey's mm -hmm. bad. This is the, yeah. you know, so like that's where we're at. <laughs> right. 
Um, no, I just, I'm really glad that you liked the show. Can we just talk about that for a second? <laughs> I was like, I told him to watch this weird cartoon and he's probably uh-huh. going to think like, it's so stupid, but like, I was really enjoying seeing your like reaction on Twitter and like how much you were actually mm. digging the show. So like, I'm actually glad you like, I feel like we bonded. <laughs> we're, we like, kind of did, yeah. We're like Kipo friends now. <laughs> It, like, forged our friendship, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was really cool. Like, and and also, I really enjoyed the idea of this podcast. I was explaining it to one of my friends, and he was like, that sounds like a really good show for, like, because I was like, it's about, like, media that you're, like, comforted by, blah, blah, blah. He's like, that sounds great for people with anxiety. I need to listen to this. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that that was kind of the, you know, the whole world going to shit was kind of the catalyst for me starting this. Um, I've talked about this kind of here and there, but like, yeah, um, you know, the, I think everyone, whether or not you have um, diagnosed anxiety is anxious right now. Everything yep. is putting people on edge. There's a lot of reasons to be angry, to be sad, to be afraid. And um, I want, I don't necessarily know if giving people an escape is what I seek, but I do want to encourage conversations about things that people love and make them happy. Yeah. And um, I and I'm so glad that again I'm so glad that you know not only that you recommended this show to me because uh, I ended up loving it but that I did love it and um, that we were able to have such like a genuine conversation about this because I haven't this hasn't really happened yet but I I feel like um, I I'm only I'm trying to only do episodes of this show about things that I'm that I've consumed and that I've watched because I feel like that's the only way I can really be genuine about it. Yeah, hundred percent. And, I should have got you, know, you to watch Gilmore Girls. Damn. <laughs> I've actually. Wait, I'm sorry. I said I should have got you to watch Gilmore Girls. Damn. <laughs> I'm actually kind. I've, I've I've seen a good amount of Gilmore Girls because my girlfriend really likes that show. It's so good. Um, it's so good. Man. Yeah, that the dialogue is so snappy and so good. I love it. Um, but yeah, I I think um you know Kipo specifically is one of those things that have brought me back. It was almost like the scene in uh, Ratatouille, and I, I I don't know if I referenced this scene before, but I'm sure I'll reference this scene a hell of a lot of times in the future on this show. But the scene in Ratatouille where that like super um, jaded food critic takes one bite of the dish, and then he has a flashback to when he's a little kid in the countryside with his mom, and. Um, that's what Kipo, Kipo was a lot like that for me because I was raised on, um, kind of like the mentality of Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite shows of all time is Looney Tunes. And after that, it's like Clone War, it's like Clone Wars, uh, Naruto, um, a bunch of like cartoons and stuff. And none of them necessarily are tonally the same as Kipo, but a lot of them kind of, uh, draw from the same well. Yeah. So I'm so, I, I, I'm I agree. So glad. That's that's why it did it for me too. It was like mm-hmm. that reference of growing up and me watching Saturday morning cartoons and just like vibing. And now I've got this great show I can consume with my kids, mm-hmm. and it's not at all like too dumb for adults to watch in any way, right. shape, or form. Like you don't feel like you're watching like a super kid show. It's very cinematic quality. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, no, I definitely. I appreciate you having me on the show. Uh, Zombie, now it's the part of the show where you get to plug all the awesome things you do on the internet. I uh, am Zombie Kills on all social media, but oh, I that's stream. So awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm Zombie Kills across the board. Z o m b a e k i l l z, and I stream on Twitch Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 7 30 p.m central until 10 30 p.m central so it's like the same schedule all the time you can catch me playing games badly but being really fun and funny and having a good time with friends um i love to speak about activism uh Mm -hmm. i like to talk to people about the ways that they can become and be better humans And I like to raise awareness for things that are very important to me, like prison reform. So if you catch Mm -hmm. me on Twitter, you'll catch me talking about Pokemon or maybe fighting the man at any moment. (laughs) So make sure you follow me on all socials so you get the full spectrum of of who I am as a person. And I I can I can vouch for Zombie as probably one of the best Twitter followers. Like, I'm I'm so glad that I listened to that episode of Spawn on me because otherwise I don't think I would have ended up following you. 
but like genuinely you're one of my favorite twitter followers uh on my timeline i feel so or cool twitter right follows. Now. i feel really cool now <laughs> i'm always just like posting what the fuck ever i feel like and i'm like people mm-hmm. must think i'm so weird like <laughs> <laughs> well it's so important to be genuine you know you don't you don't see that all the time in uh it, i mean i was on real genuine on the spot on me and uh you know mm-hmm. people i i thought it was gonna make me um people were gonna be really mean about me which i got a little bit of that but like mm-hmm. i got a whole lot of people who were really like they they dug my reality and i'm like this has been me the whole time so it's kind of cool because like i was the smaller unknown mm-hmm on on the podcast and it's really boosted the shit out of my career <laughs> it's kind of it's wild which mm. is a huge freaking blessing that i got to do what i do all the time at a time where mm. it was needed for me to do what i do all the time yeah you know? and, and what a better what better place than <laughs> than spawn on me i feel like that's such a a great place to be uh yeah khalif is really dope like i i knew khalif ahead of time like we'd been in the same circle but we hadn't been Mm -hmm. like you know i'm just like i'm kind of in a i was on mixer okay i was in a whole different universe (laughs) and so like coming over to spawn on me was it was life-changing i mean it made me choose it come to twitch thank god i did because that (laughs) that ship sunk really fucking fast so bad oh oh i have lots of words for that <laughs> yeah if you ever oh, want someone to talk God. about that on a podcast i am <sighs> ready uh i invested a good bit of time there and i'm I so bet. glad that spawn on me sp- like spurred me to leave because i just wanted mm-hmm. to see other black people and be around other black people uh and then it came out how racist the platform was and i was like bitch i told y'all yeah. like i told everybody <laughs> i told everybody on that spawn on me podcast like i told everybody what i thought about it and it went to shit literally two exact weeks later <laughs> Wow, you switch you you only just switched over that quickly? Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, it's that quick. I've been here for I think it's like I think twenty days now, so like almost three wow, weeks. Nice. Yeah, so twenty days. So like, it's not been that long. <laughs> I like well, that's, it though. That's all. Yeah, I I um I just switched over a couple months ago from YouTube. Uh, I don't know anything about YouTube other than you, my kids YouTube, are addicted to it. YouTube is like a shit show in an entire in an in a in an entirely different way <laughs> um instead of the platform being hourly racist they're probably internally racist but there are a lot more racist people in chat and a lot more anti-semitic people in chat and um uh well, not I mean, shitting I deal on with racists real good on twitch i've had a lot i actually only had very few racist viewers on mixer hmm. um because there's so few viewers on Mixer, but um, <laughs> I've had a lot of racism on Twitch, like a lot, hmm. like an exhaustive amount. Yeah, I again, I I just started, but like, oh man, YouTube people, because it's so easy to make alts, so people would just come into the chat and just be disgusting <sighs> with the same account. But anyways, anyways, sorry, <laughs> that kind of got derailed. Um, but yeah. Go find Zombie on all the different social media accounts she talked about earlier. Um, I will have everything listed at the top of the description down below. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter and Twitch at C-H-A-S underscore M-K-E. And you can find me on YouTube at just Chaz, that's C-H-A-S. And um, you can also, uh, as of a couple days ago, you can find my work over at Dual Shockers. Um, And I'll have a link to that in the description as well. Anyways, thank you all very much for listening. Peace out. life started with the big bang an explosion so great from which we all sprang the universe dispersed mass traverses space time past space expanding mad fast stars made of light and gas cosmos with billions of stars gleaming these are the events that brought us wolves into being new time new time now you know our name and you know we train to wax poetic and wane with superior brain Evolution's tame, our instincts we aim to wax poetic and lame with our superior brain. For years we ask how, but we should ask why. Below a canopy of nebulas in the sky. Orbiting matter, inspiring thought. And in this perfect vacuum, our, our pale, pale blue, blue dot. dot. New touch, new touch, new touch, new touch. Newton Wolf explained the knowledge we gain to wax poetic and lame with our superior brain. Evolution's tame, 
Our instincts remain in two racks poetic and lame with our superior brain. Pro time, new time, folding together like a food time, colliding in poles like a perfect storm, creating galaxies and planets like the one that we're on. We're talking about Earth, y'all. All right, now it's time to break it down. With every kind of star that has ever been classified. We're talking giants, sub-giants, red giants, blue giants, luminous giants, very luminous super giants, and less luminous super giants. Pole, star, neutron star, when they rotate together, that's a binary star. Class W, class O, class L, class F. Do we have any other stars? Oh, no, no Jack. New, tuh, new, tuh. Red dwarf, white dwarf, brown dwarfs are fun. If you want to see a yellow dwarf, look to our sun. Well, don't look at the sun. Oh, no, don't do that. That's everything we learned about the known universe. The end.